We are back. Sorry for the delay. I had some uh, software <sighs> issues on my end. Yeah. Weren't we praising Apple just last week? <laughs> <laughs> well, is it Apple's fault or UAD's fault? It's Apple's fault. So what's happening is, uh, uh, what, do we, what do we call these? I guess kernel extensions is what they call them, mm. but we could say drivers. Drivers that have access to the kernel in a way that's like, I guess, old school on the Windows side and, and right. maybe old school on the Linux side even. Um, that require just a little bit of hooks into the kernel to work will no longer work, I think, in the next update. And UAD, I think, is just counting down the days. But what happened was the yeah. dot release seemed to have made it so that I had to go into the system settings and approve the extensions. Again, there are mm. two of them in there. Um, one of them was, I think it was Zoom, and Zoom's like virtual audio controller. And then the other was UAD's Apollo software. So, wow, here we are. It worked. I feel like I should have a backup USB device. It's just the delay between the camera and the audio was driving me up the wall. The UAD yeah. is fantastic for that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's amazing. And I get why Apple's doing it. It's for security, et cetera, et cetera. It's, sure. just, it's just a pain. I, I normally don't read the release notes on dot releases. <laughs> and having just used this microphone yesterday, I, I figured all was well, but, but what yeah. can I do? How about yourself? How are you doing? So, good. Good. I yeah, new T-shirt. I went to the huh. <laughs> I'm teasing you. Oh, uh, this T-shirt. I I, I don't know what's up with it. Um, the it looking at it in person, I cannot see any stains. Looking at on the image, it looks like there's like this massive oh. grease stain right here. Yeah, yeah. I I've also noticed that my acne seems to look a lot worse on the other side than it does elsewhere. I, I lack the uh, skin smoothing features that I yeah. I am used to. Uh, and and perhaps it would uh, it would smooth over your shirt as well. Sorry, yeah. I interrupted you. What what have you been up to? The other thing I was up to was this morning we got up pretty early to drive over to SeaTac Airport, right? To drop off my wife and daughter at the airport, and wave them goodbye. And they're off to Detroit, where wow. my wife's from. And then I came home, and I'll be. They come back in about a month. Oh, you're a free agent for a month. So we can expect a, a llama upload a day, right? And a no llama update. <laughs> there will be a lot more <laughs> videos, yes. Uh, I'm sure the chat will be very happy. I should probably actually <laughs> pop into the YouTube and, and see how they're doing. But yes, uh, that that is fantastic. I think your audience yeah. would be very happy to see more content yes. from you. Yes. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to doing more. I've got a, a an aggressive schedule uh, oh. that I've set up. And um, we'll see if how long I'm able to keep that up. And of course, as soon as I start the YouTube video, it, it started the audio, but it looks like we're good here. Nothing too okay. crazy in the chat just yet. So that's where I think we're all right. So what, what are your, your content plans? Have you got like a whole, do you have a schedule? I, I really have just my, my calendar of, uh, like a, what I'm going to do each block of time throughout mm -hmm. the day for the next, and I want to try to get to a machine, like, like a, a process of. So flow. right now, when I when I create videos, I go from beginning to mm -hmm. end to publish and all in one, do all of it things for that one thing. And okay. I've always known that I need to kind of batch it up. And so, you know, maybe have the script writing and, and do a few different videos at the same time. And when I mm -hmm. actually record, do a few of them all at the same time and then do all the editing all at the same time. And and. It's hard for the first one to go through that process because it's got to wait a little bit longer to get done. But the hope is that I'm able to, once they start coming out, then they're going to come out more regularly. And I can also build up more of a backlog so that if I'm away, I don't have to go for a mad dash for you know a week trying to produce two weeks of content. Right. Now, oh, do you have... schedule your uploads or anything like that, or are they, they manual? I have scheduled. Like, when I went to... Last couple of trips I did, I had scheduled videos published to publish. And uh, and that worked really well. Yeah, I can schedule the... I can schedule the video getting published, but I can't schedule the... Like, uh, a Twitter post... Uh, posting, letting people know about it. Right. Because I would be linking to a... Uh, URL that doesn't exist yet. Right. Um, and that seems to have a problem. Um, yeah, you, but... you'd almost need like an IFTT 
kind of thing or or i don't know auto yeah. gpt or something like yeah. why not post a video yeah please make a relevant tweet <laughs> right yeah <laughs> Interesting. So, that's a cool problem. I, I think yeah. I, I've mentioned this before, but the tedium or the boring sort of manual tasks are, mm -hmm. are what I expect uh, a lot of these models to help me with. And and whether right. or not, I, I'm, I'm not saying they're going to do the whole thing soup to nuts, but the the digest video and make post about video, I think is one of those things that's, yeah, you could probably do it. And then like make sure the, the link is updated, that kind of thing. Before right, you right. push publish, ensure that the link is doesn't go to some random location kind of thing. We have a comment that your audio is very low. Shoot, shoot. I will hopefully fix that, Davidas. My apologies. We normally uh, check this beforehand, and I think I messed up my speaker settings here. Let me see if I can do that now. Sorry about that. I will uh, add is a bit low. My apologies. I will turn it up again. All right. There we go. Still, Still quite, quite low. low. Okay. Jeez, I've got to turn huh. up pretty loud. I'm I'm yellow lining on my end, so I wonder if it's something that I've I've done compared to Matt's. Ah, uh, okay. So compared Matt's, to my voice, Matt's that, mastering's that, uh, too high. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think I can turn it up a little bit more. Let's see. Okay. So that? now we're I'm at like plus one LUFT. I think a good way it is. So we're at like ad volume now for YouTube. So <laughs> <laughs> if there is a mid roll ad, hopefully this this audio should match. Yeah, Davidas, let me know if, if if that's any better. If not, I can crank it all the way up. But I think that might be a little yeah, too much compared to my voice. Oh, okay, perfect. that's okay. perfect. Okay, so plus you're, one is what I think perfect. you said too. Yeah, plus okay. one LUFT. All right. Okay. Now that we've got that uh, out of the so way, else, go, thank you very on? much. By the way. <laughs> Oh, yeah. fantastic in the chat. Everyone else is going to thank you later uh, yeah. for fixing this. So they don't have to listen to a whole episode where I'm very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll see you an update. Yeah, dropping out them off. That was, uh, you know, in the last few days have been, you know, getting, getting you know, condensed daddy time and, and you know, just holding, being with my daughter the whole time and, and right. not spending much time at all with, uh, with YouTube. With, with the so, nerds. <laughs> yeah yeah um but uh so i don't know what did we do um there's this great uh venue here on the island called Me? islandwood okay. and uh it was created by a guy named paul brainerd who who founded um aldus corporation which got sold to adobe you... and with all his uh money he bought this massive plot of land on bainbridge island and created a kind of a school, a, a higher ed kind of school, as well as a place for inner city kids to go to camp and learn about the woods. And nice, um, but they also have these community camps every um, every few months where you know people on the island can come out, come in and and stay for the weekend um, and do hiking. And and it's a two hundred fifty acres, um, so it's a pretty nice and it's gorgeous. It's beautiful trails all throughout, hilly. Um, and so on Sunday they had their Father's Day barbecue, and uh, the one of the highlights of going to Islandwood is the food oh, because really? it is spectacular. And uh, so it was a very heavy meal, okay. um, but it was amazing. Was amazing. it all meat? I'm just wondering what kind of like local ingredients might be on Bainbridge Island. So there. There was a uh, brisket and nice. uh, no wonder it was heavy. Pork. Yeah, brisket's gonna make you go to sleep. Yeah. A pork, some sort of pork thing, but also uh, there was a uh, grilled oyster mushroom and jackfruit. Nice. Um, and uh, and lots of salads. Yeah, it was just a great. I mean, it's food for everyone, and right. you know, if you're if you are gluten free, there's a section for you. If you're right. you know whatever other allergies, there's there's stuff for all the. All the requirements. All the requirements. I love it. Yeah. Now, I, I should state, uh, speaking of brisket, I, I have not had lunch, so in case I'm low energy, I apologize. Lunch <laughs> is arriving, however, which is why I have not had it. So okay. In case you see people flitting behind me picking up stuff, it's just mm. my lunch arriving. That That is all. But I did, in fact, order brisket today. Having done that, oh, okay. uh, I, I walked during lunch instead of eating, which okay. is like maybe not the best idea, but yes. <laughs> I've been trying to like be active because I, I think I mentioned last time I, I'm like losing muscle, which is really worrisome to me. So I'm trying mm. to like build it back up. Mm. I, I feel like, uh, yeah, after losing a, a ton of weight, I feel like muscle is yeah. us, not yeah. necessarily fat. 
Yeah. <laughs> I still have the stored knowledge. I'm just losing the ability yeah. <laughs> to do everything else, which is not great. That's right. Uh, but yeah. Hello, Francisco. Thank yeah. you for joining. Yeah, a few people in the chat here. It's fantastic. And we even got um, somebody who uh, who liked the video already, so that, that's, that's good. Here, what? We'll, we'll, wow. we'll give it another like. Yeah, two likes. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, these videos have been, uh, the, the the streams have been, you know, a lot of people watching after the fact. Fantastic. Um, you know, some of the streams are hitting 2,000, 3,000 views. Wow. You know, a week later. Wow. You, mu you must have something to say. <laughs> I guess so. I'm also going to, one thing I'm going to be doing mm -hmm. while, now that, uh, you know, I've got a whole day's worth of time to invest Right. Um, I'm going to do more of these streams. Um, right so I'm doing them. The thought is maybe even every day. Oh, wow. Uh, do a stream. Where so you go? we'll see what it's like. Oh. They said they really like what we're doing. Oh. I'm, I'm doing nothing, damn it. Just that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a color commentator here. I'm, I'm the guy you're supposed to laugh at. Matt's doing all the work. All I do is show up. It's phenomenal. Thank you so much, Matt, for hosting me. <laughs> uh, so. I think last, last week, week we talked a little bit about that. Just a, just a quick correction, actually. Uh, yeah. Last we talked a little bit about that Canon lens coming out for uh, the Apple Vision Pro. And I mistook right. the focal length, I think is 85. It is really wide. I, I feel like it's eight, mm. eight point something millimeters. So oh, okay. super, super wide. Because I was trying to think like, yeah, 3D portraits sound amazing to me, but I can't imagine right. anybody else is interested in this. And yes, right. in, in fact, that was the case. Uh, but it does look pretty cool. And then I did have a look at that Black Magic camera we were talking about as well after the fact, which looks mm -hmm. amazing, but it's also oh, yeah. quite expensive as a result. But I say this because there is a yet a new camera announcement this week, because of course it never ends. And mm -hmm. I realize you've probably not shot film in a, you know, a while, but do you remember yes. the Olympus Pen film cameras back in the I day? I do. Half frame. So this is a Pentax half frame. It's kind of an okay. SPO wannabe kind of look like, and it's a mm -hmm. 37 millimeter equivalent uh, lens on it, but it's also vertical frame. So similar to the pen, I think. Uh, so when you shoot, you're shooting vertical frame. So maybe good for the, the kids of today. And if it's half frame, they're certainly going to get a lot of grain. So I, I feel like they're maybe huh. trying to attack the target Isn't market. Is 17? People. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Huh. Yeah, and I think the 17 might be the focal length, but again, it's it's half frame, so I think you multiply by two-ish to get there. Oh, sorry, mm. here, here comes the food. Here comes the food, yeah. Well, this looks pretty interesting. Yeah, I listen, there's a certain aesthetic to film shots and maybe authenticity that we're losing a lot in digital photos or, or, I guess, generated photos as well. People are trying to make sure that they can prove their authenticity these days. Right. Film's an easy way to do that, but of course, you can man manipulate it after the fact. I yeah. do like what Leica is doing in terms of like embedding it in the image. So you know that, you know, mm -hmm. the lineage basically of the, the photo that you're mm -hmm. looking at. I think it's great for press. Like if you're in the news right. working for Associated Press or something like that, they do not want you touching that image at all. In fact, even cropping right. it might be a little bit too much for them, depending on how heavy the crop mm. is. But the guidelines for AP are pretty specific in terms of what you can give to them that's not a photo illustration and right. it feels like the like away or the film way film way is kind of bad for the environment let's be honest uh, but the like a way of doing things might be the way to right. say that yes this image is in fact real it hasn't been altered right. or doctored right which is it it listen truth and advertising we'll leave that where it is but in terms of like actual news i feel like the images should reflect somehow the news and i i get that there's a right. bit of um there's a bit of leeway in photography in terms of the way that you frame things or mm -hmm. like uh shooting low or high for example or, or lighting right. somebody from below to make them look a little bit more sinister but yeah i, I i'm happy to see a new film camera i realize i might be okay. the minority but yeah I, I was excited wow wow i saw that there was um saw a video pretty recently about uh somebody talking about what they thought was the most important camera like of all time. And they had listed the Pentax K1000. Right. From art schools, I think, right? Because they all, maybe like that's photo what programs I mean, use them. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't require a battery, if I recall correctly either. Or if they did, it was um, just for the light meter and everything else. It was just the light fine. meter. Yeah. Because yeah. I had the Sears equivalent. Interesting. Um, so Sears took the Pentax K1000 right. and rebranded it. Right. Um, and that was my first camera. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, somebody else in the comments had a AK-1000 as well. Yeah, it's it's very manual. I think that's a good yeah. summary of, of that camera. I love it. Don't don't get me wrong. And I started out on Pentax as well. But yeah. Yeah. It's it's super manual. We got one question here from Francisco. I think I, I haven't used Red Pajama before, but I've certainly changed models without changing my system prompt and had a whole bunch of fun stuff happen. I'm not sure if that's what's going on here, but it's saying the, the model kept feeding tokens nonstop, which is interesting. I've yet hmm. to have that specific problem, but I've definitely had answers that included characters that weren't subvert supposed to be mm -hmm. part of the prompt basically after every question is this a using olama or using some other oh that's a good question because olama is always going to have a system prompt that is a good question with it. yeah what was i using actually that's a good i was using um oh, we'll no, see not what... always but we'll see what they say but i think i was using that that other ui that's not great the one that's not yeah, open that... source but is free oh shoot. lm studio lm studio sorry yeah there we yeah. go. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Francisco, it's a, it, I won't say it's a problem with LM Studio. We'll call it a design decision. But when it's... you change models, it does not change the system prompt or the way that it, right. it the the default API basically it looks at. And it's generally okay if you're using like things that are Llama three derived or something like that. But if it's not, if you're switching yeah. between them, then yeah, you can certainly have that problem. The the system prompt as well as the uh, the template. That's yeah, it's like an API. They all require a different. Template. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And usually with Olama, you know, you you download a model, and the Olama way has all those things together into one piece, um, and so you get you run the model. You already got a system prompt and and template, and you switch to a different model. Well, now you've got the appropriate system prompt and template for that um, for that model. And then we get another photography fan. Yeah, the, the 6D was definitely a favorite. I find it interesting on the, the Canon side, talking about 50 millimeter nifty 50s, because a lot of people are using crop. And it becomes a portrait lens, which is awesome. Don't right. get me wrong, but right. it's definitely not the same thing. But yeah, 6D yeah. is full frame. Nifty 50 is kind of what your eyes see. I don't know. Are you more of like a, like, do you see wide or do you see more more narrow? Like in, in terms me? of like what you perceive. Just... I mean, when I, when I hold up at like a camera on one side yeah. with a 50 millimeter lens, yeah. And and I'm looking out the other way. They look I identical. Oh, so you're, you're the you're the narrow focus kind of person. I think I was when I was younger as well. And now that I'm getting older, I'm moving more towards like a 35 or 40. Mm. But I don't know. Yeah, like 44 is probably yeah. fine. What's that classic 44 millimeter lens? Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's got some swirly bokeh. I think is oh, shoot. I <laughs> Helios is what it's called. My apologies. Oh yeah. Yeah. Have you used one of those? It's such a weird focal length. 44 millimeters is, is quite strange. Mm -hmm. But just a bit wider than 50, imperceptibly wider. Super fun. There was another one, another lens maker that had like kind of more gimmicky lenses. Um, and God, they were really popular for a while. Um, I think I originally had mine from film stuff yep. and then switched over to digital. And like it had a, um, almost like a, a tilt shift uh, front to it. Oh, was it the lens baby? Um, Lens baby, yeah. yeah, yeah. They had a few pretty cool lenses. They also had yeah. like those old designs as well. Oh, I've forgotten the the term for it, but there's a specific lens that they made as well that's made based on a like a lens design from the 1920s. Oh. It, it's really cool. I'll see yeah. if I can find it here. But yeah, they had the um. I've always wanted the lens baby kit. Yeah. With, with all the lenses, I, I'm right. also uh, a fan of those filters from uh prism effects for example i like okay, messing with the yeah. images basically anything yeah. i can do i'll even put like hands in front and stuff like that but like yeah. anytime i can make things just a little bit different i i, I would love to do so yeah yeah if there was a time when i would uh carry around like the the large larger format token uh filter holder right with the the flat um filters um and then get the graduated ones right where it was like graduated the top half that way you could get like a landscape where the land is all bright but then the sky was kind of a it would often be like a, a cocoa kind of a, a dark brownish color but graduated right um as well as uh, all sorts of star effect i mean all, lots of i had a lot of cocoa filters i like the star effects i started using them yeah. recently they're cheesy for sure but if you're trying <laughs> to go for cheese like this is this yeah. is the way <laughs> Yeah, it is 
so cheesy, especially with cinema lights, because you can like put them behind somebody and like bounce them off their shoulders. Right. So if they've got right. like uh, what are they called, epaulets or or shoulder things uh, that uh, shine or anything, <laughs> it looks super cheesy, but I I really like it. Yeah. Oh, lots of stuff here. Uh, sorry, I think we've we've on <laughs> we've released a <laughs> we've released a photography theme here in the chat. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Uh, what else did we talk uh, about last week? So we talked a I, bunch about I WWDC. Did. Sorry, go ahead. Well, th there's a question here. I did oh. done black and white development at home. Oh, yeah. I turned when my brother went off to college. Yeah. He went to um, University of Pennsylvania, and then I converted his room into my dark room. Nice. Um, so I was like 14 at the time, right? Um, and uh, and had blackout curtains and all, and and was able to do a lot of stuff. Had a uh, it was. Yeah, and that's ha that was what introduced me to the local camera shop because I would go in there. I was like their one customer for darkroom chemicals. <laughs> at 14. Um, that's awesome. At 14, They must yeah. have loved you. Yeah, uh, and then eventually I uh, uh, started working there and getting it at cost. It was like, oh, my God, this is so much better. Right. Yeah, the uh, – I'm trying to think, like – when I first bought, I'm pretty sure it was a tripod. Like once you start working for a camera store, like they'll, they'll give you spiffs and discounts and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And and on some stuff, it's it's pretty good. But in some camera manufacturers don't give you much. But I re I remember right. Manfrotto had great discounts, and I got something for like mm. a third of the cost. Um, yeah. So the the dirty story here, folks, is that some camera manufacturers just basically don't have any margin to give you a discount. Right. Uh, I sold a lot of Olympus, and Olympus did give you discounts but still the cameras are pretty expensive for me at the time so i bought a tripod and i used that tripod i think up until like covid like 2020 so right. from i want to say 2000 to 2020 the same tripod right. and it is perfectly fine like tripods will yeah. outlast i live you basically it was amazing yeah and i think i got it rusty i, I put in some water and didn't clean it off after and yeah. it started to corrode but yeah those discounts were awesome Especially on frames. I, and, and I don't yeah, remember getting any sort of nope. discount. I mean, we got the, the all the stuff at cost. I mean, at cost from the manufacturer, and then we would mark it up a little bit in the store. And so, cameras and any, any sort of like expensive, more expensive items, we always sold at about five percent over cost. So that was not where we made any money. It right. was all on film, right? Um, and filters. Filters right. were the big winner. Um, you know, a and there's and the prices that we charge for filters was the same as everyone else. So we didn't charge any more, but um, you know if you saw a hundred dollar filter, chances are it costs the camera shop five dollars, and so it's like ninety five dollar profit. Wow! Um, and so you always tried to sell filters with any new camera purchase. Gosh, because that was where the profit was, and as well as on film. Wow, I, I had no idea. I had so many people try to sell me filters with cameras, and it just mm -hmm. like depending on the quality of the filter, it would just make your photos worse, like UV filters yeah. or, or what have yeah. you. Just awful. Lots of stuff in the comments. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one about the carbon fiber tripod. Yeah. So just to read it, I, I had to buy a carbon fiber tripod. Apparently, your fingers can stick to metal at minus twenty degrees Celsius. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty close to Fahrenheit. Is it minus thirty when when the two are the same? Is it minus forty? I think it's minus thirty. I don't know. Yeah, that sounds it's right. It's quite cold. Yeah. Quite cold. Yeah. I, I still have yet to go down the carbon fiber tripod path. I've got one that says it is, but I'm pretty sure it's it's not. Or, or like there's other yeah. stuff in it. One of those eBay specials when you're buying a carbon fiber tripod for about 100 bucks, it's probably not the best right. <laughs> carbon fiber tripod. But it is light, which is nice. But yeah, yeah. Not, not great. I do have one from, uh, who might say, Gitzo. Oh, nice. Gitzos are really nice um, tripods. And I had an, also had a, a carbon fiber from Really Right Stuff. Ooh, nice. Yeah, that's good gear. Yeah, I miss that. These days, honestly, like the camera for me, like, so my webcam is basically a camera, and I think Matt's in the same spot in the mm -hmm. tripod that I'm using that I bought for basically just setting up the camera to, to make it yeah. proper. Yeah. I, I can't even remember what I mean. Sidui, I think, is the name of the brand. S -I -R -U -I. Yeah, I think, I, I think my tripod right here is that same. Oh, right on. Right on. Yeah. It's got a little bowl in it, which is nice. So, like, once I yep. set it up, yep. I can just use the bowl to, to adjust, which is way better yep. than using the legs to adjust. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good point, Inglesman, Finland. Uh, boys and their toys. We, we certainly do like yeah. toys. Yeah. <laughs> I have a garage full of toys, yes. Unfortunately. Uh, let's see here. 
Well, I, sort of uh, more linking our usual topic to yep. this photography topic. I see that uh, Adobe's been sued today by U.S. government. Yeah, I wasn't sure if we... <laughs> I was going to try to make that segue, but yeah. Mm. And I, I think they announced it. Was it yesterday or the day before I saw that? And I, I have thoughts. I, I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to be too negative against Adobe here, but what, what are you... What, have you ever canceled uh, Adobe? Because we were talking about that subscription, I think not last week, but the yeah. week before. Have you ever tried to cancel the Adobe I mean, subscription? I still have the $10 a month subscription for Lightroom and Photoshop. Right. I think that's it. It's Lightroom and Photoshop. Um and I've been paying that same nine dollar, ten dollars, whatever it is, for four years, five years, six years—I don't know—a long time. Um, there was a time. I don't know if I've. Uh, I haven't used Premiere since Creative Cloud mm -hmm. started, so. Um, uh, so yeah, I've not had a reason to use any of their other tools. So I've never paid more. And so I'm way past that first year where there's that crazy requirement to, for canceling. Um, so I, I, if I canceled now, I, I wouldn't have any extra cost. I, I will I say having canceled past the first year, it's still pretty bad. You have to jump through. Oh, yeah? I ended up having to call them because that, again, I'm, I'm trying to be charitable. The, the website was broken in a way that I couldn't <laughs> unsubscribe, <laughs> which I mean, <laughs> Maybe it was my eye blocker or something like that. It's it's hard to say, but I called them. Um, and I think it took about forty five minutes, maybe fifty, to mm -hmm. actually get the thing canceled. It it took yeah. some convincing. They tried to give me discounts and stuff yeah. like that. And it's just like, no, like I I really need to cancel. Um, but yeah, it, I mean that being said, I've gone back and I have the all all singing, all dancing plan yet again. But looking at it, I, I think after our our talk, like I do own Lightroom four, which is really old right. at this point. I think photoshop 6 from like a long mm -hmm. time ago i've got licenses yeah, for yeah. them and and somehow i've got like an acrobat key but those are the pieces of software that right. i own for a yeah. while it would mean however running my old software that i'd need to use a vm or something like that to get into it it would be a total pain because mm -hmm. the software is yeah. so old or a dedicated computer which then i need to think right. about card readers and hard drives and all that yeah, stuff yeah so i understand like Benefit of the doubt, I understand why they want a subscription to make their software better, to keep up with camera mm -hmm. raw files and stuff like that. And honestly, yep. it's still better than, uh, let's see, the competitor would be uh, one something, Capture for, One, I, I think. And, for what? For... Yeah, for like saying tethering and, and ingesting photos and stuff like that. I think it would be Capture One. Capture One is Capture pretty one, yeah. slow on yeah. the raw update stuff. Yeah. I don't normally buy new cameras, but that can be an issue. The other one is like, honestly, raw therapy, if you haven't tried it recently, is quite good. It's different, but quite yeah. good. Or if you're looking at something like GIMP, or GIMP's pretty good, or GIMP Shop, if yeah. you need to look like Photoshop. I know, it's got a weird name, but it's quite I good. I don't know. No? Okay. And the last one is no. Darktable, which I, I've tried recently. Oh, it's yeah, okay. actually quite good. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend GIMP, but GIMP Shop, I think, which is like the, the Photoshop kind of looking one, mm. and then Darktable and... And uh, yeah, raw therapy with two E's at the end hmm. are the ones that... I don't know about raw therapy. It, it's quite good. Um, the problem a lot of people have in raw therapy is I believe it defaults to scope instead of histogram when you're looking at your shots. Hmm. So if you're not used to like the way color is done in... Oh shoot, what's that video editing app? Man, my brain is mush today. I should have had lunch. Um, the <laughs> one that's <laughs> primarily color centric from Blackmagic... Resolve. Oh, DaVinci? Resolve, yeah. DaVinci Resolve, Resolve yeah. yeah. So if you're not used to looking at that scope view and Resolve, it might be a little right. bit of a learning curve, but you can change it as well, which people right. don't necessarily notice. Oh, I'll get some more. Yeah. I used Photoshop, Flash, Micromedia, and other software back when you paid for a license to have it. And then when it came to subscriptions, I gave up. Definitely not a supporter of multi subs. I, I mean, I totally get that. I also understand Adobe's, I don't know, reason to do it. I think the lawsuit yeah. is actually about, it's not a bait and switch, but I think the lawsuit is, is basically saying that those cards that you pick up for a year in like a Staples or whatever are basically mm -hmm. a bait and switch. That That's the primary, the chief complaint. Mm -hmm. It's not about the fact that they moved the subscription or anything like that. Right. It's the right. one year plan and then upselling or, or being difficult right. to cancel that one year plan or what have you. That, yeah. that is my take on it. I don't know if you, yeah. you understood it differently. Yeah. I mean, I just saw uh, the first probably a couple of minutes of a video by Brad 
Col- Colbell. You ever heard that? I have not. Uh, he does a lot of animation, animation on iPads nice. and other tablets. The other one was Instagram's new TOS. Have you seen this? Where you have to opt out of training their LLM, but the opt out page doesn't work unless you're in EU. So <laughs> again, <laughs> listen, I, I work in software. I understand that like opt out yeah. and cancellation forms can break and maybe yep. there's a lot of people using them. Totally get it. Should probably be able to use it. Uh, and it's, it's weird that in the EU it works. It looks yeah. like they're training their LLM on stuff uploaded to Instagram. I believe this was yep. the case for quite some time. Having looked at the, uh, what is, what is Facebook called? Or Meta, sorry. Uh, Meta calls it the bad, bad meme model. And mm. anyway, it's included in a lot of the image models, in fact. Mm. Um, but as a result, if you look up memes and a lot of the image generation ones, they, they will understand what a meme template looks like because right. they've been trained on bad memes. Now, the one right. Meta has got out there that they're checking your images against, it's basically full of bad stuff so it shouldn't be including these like gen ai right. llms unfortunately it, it is as part of the library mm. this library as well like we're training it basically which <laughs> is terrible right, right um yeah so a lot of people have jumped ship to something called i think it's called kara have you heard of kara yeah i have heard that recently it's i haven't looked at it it's not great um, it's, it's definitely <laughs> rough right around the edges. I think for two weeks now, I haven't been able to change my profile photo. So it's just that okay. white C in a black circle. Right. Again, like I understand they're having problems. They've got a lot of users. <laughs> they're trying to grow. Like yeah. Instagram yeah. when it first started, was also a, a steaming pile of poo. It was, it was a hot mess <laughs> for, for a minute. Um, but yeah, I've got faith in the Kara people. I think specifically on the illustration side or the painting side, mm-hmm. that, that kind of thing specifically. There needs to be something better than DeviantArt, for example, right. to allow you to host your images in a way that, like, you can be sure that there aren't other people uploading a, a plethora of AI-generated images. Again, not there's anything wrong with that, but when you do want to separate it and don't want to be training a model, I, I think that's why a lot of people are looking at Kara. I, I could. Huh. I I didn't know DeviantArt still existed. Yes. Definitely still exists. <laughs> so does Tumblr as well. <laughs> and really? may I remind the audience, the gentle listeners, that Flickr still exists and is still awesome <laughs> as yeah. someone with a lifetime membership. Uh, but yes, yeah, there is. There's not a lot. There's 500 pixels as well if you want to get into it. But there's, oh, yeah. there's not yeah. a lot of image sharing places that have kind of survived. Right. Google Photos is is a shadow of what it once was. There's not really a lot of social stuff in there any longer. Is uh five hundred pixels? I think they own. I mean, that was another big one. That was the um, Russian one. I think they own Flickr. Oh really? Or did own Flickr? Are they still Russian based? I don't know. Interesting. Uh no, it looks like Visual China Group bought five hundred hmm. px. Interesting. It's basically the the Getty of China purchased yeah. <laughs> purchased five hundred pixels. I I did not know that. Yeah. I also didn't know that they were uh, Russian backed prior prior to that. They were originally. That was the oh. And my apologies. Smug Mug are the people who acquired Flickr. Ah, which I I haven't used Smug Mug in a long time either. I use Smug Mug. Um, actually, I I don't. I haven't used it in a few months. But I was that was the photo sharing platform that we use to share photos of our daughter with her birth parents. Very cool. I like it was that. a nice, easy cross platform solution. that wasn't too expensive. Hi, we've got a really good question in the chat. Oh, yeah. um, is there any way that I could run a rag application on a single board computer with storage and AI acceleration? For example, like the Pi five Helio chips and M two SSD. Um, I, I, listen, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that by the time you're done setting all that up, it may have been cheaper to buy like a used Dell that had a spare PCIe slot, honestly, and then a cheap graphics card. I, I, I honestly yeah. feel like the performance is better and you're going to pay less. But if size is the problem, like if you're actually thinking about an application of this, my understanding is as of last week or the week before, there's a hat for the Pi that you can put an accelerator on. Uh, 
are we calling these MPUs? Has that stuck yet? But basically some mm -hmm. some neural accelerator that you could put on. And it could be Helio chips or what you're actually asking about. I, I didn't remember so the, the vendor name. My apologies. There, there is a video on YouTube mm -hmm. by an uh, English guy who uh, shows loading up Olama on a Raspberry Pi. And it's got a lot of views because it's like of such an interesting idea. But um, you're going to wait so long for anything right. to happen. <laughs> You know, I've seen some people in the Discord, on the Alama Discord, talk about, um, oh, yeah, it's so, it's, it's so much faster than I would have expected. You know, I get an answer in, like, nine hours. It's just... I mean, oh, when this first started, my image ridiculous. generation was taking 12 hours, for sure. Yeah. Per 1024 10, 10, by 1024 image would right. take a really, right. really long time. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so much... There are so many... Decent machines with a chip that you can get for, you know, hundred, hundred and fifty dollars, which isn't that right. much more than a Pi. Right. And some of those even accept external cards. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, finding one of those routes that lets you install a decent sized GPU right. is going to be a whole lot better. Yeah. So it's... And not a lot more expensive. So it looks like there is a typo in the chat. It's not Halo, it's Halo H A I L O. I did pull it up. It is, in fact, M2 slot for Pi. Uh, but again, like the, the full cost of all this together, I, I still feel like you should get a GPU in a computer. Yeah. Space is not the concern. But if you're trying to fit this yeah. in a small spot for some sort of IoT right. or, or maybe uh, edge compute or let's say a cell tower or right. something like that, it, it would maybe make sense. But it's yeah. a little bit harder. Um, and then there's there's other things like I look forward to the day when Olama can connect to GIMP and raw therapy uh, from Angleston, which I totally mm. agree with. I'm, I'm mm. really excited about the agentic kind of approach to this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like when you've got an agent that's built into the piece of software that understands concepts like sure. in Illustrator, create me a circle because it's still still to this day can't create a circle when I use right. Gen AI right. in Illustrator, which is amazing to me. <laughs> it only like, like three. <laughs> Or four, or like a drop shadow. It can't just make a circle. Right. Uh, yeah, so that CNC mm. is absolutely right in, in that Dell and Lenovo make a bunch of mini PCs mm. that will take a half height GPU, and those half height GPUs are yeah. pretty cheap. I think Zotac is probably the manufacturer to look at. That's that's probably a pretty good. Yeah. Oh, lots of questions today. Wow. Oh, See, I, this one's definitely changing for you. with the yeah. fast growth of the truly open environments compared to open AI. We looked at a mixture of agents. Yeah, so mix, mixture of agents would be like uh, Mistral. Yeah. Uh, as an example. Uh, see the market change. Yeah. So I guess the question is here. Okay, so like, let's let's be real about my, my bet. So the reason I'm yeah. interested in Olama and the reason I'm specifically interested in the cloud offerings as well is because I think there's something here now, the question, the way I read it is, is there a market for like the offline or off cloud or like exploring Gen AI without necessarily paying someone or without necessarily, you know, free as in beer, basically, as opposed to free as in open source. The question I think, David, on, on my end is, do we think that there's any way that we could modify the models that are private going forward, in which I, I think is probably no. And the, the corollary to that is, do you think that there's a need to modify them on your own or use them offline or use them in a private setting? And I think like resoundingly, yes. The question is, is there a market there? Which I think is, is to be determined. Like, w would I pay for Olama? Would I pay 80 bucks a month for the Creative Suite version of Olama? Like, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Would I pay five? bucks a month or 10 bucks a month or like a yeah. 20 the 20 is kind of that premium subscription thing we keep ranting about like is it better than netflix basically um so yeah i think at this point in time i'd be comfortable paying a certain amount of money to something that has gen ai capabilities because i already do so i, I mean that's right. certainly something that i do canva and notion i think specifically those two have actually useful for me gen ai tools right. and the question is is there a market changing because of those truly open environments getting more popular. Does that help or is that muddy the waters even more for you? Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, I know something like Olama will eventually charge money for some of the things that they do. I don't think they're ever intending to charge you as an individual. Right. But, uh, you know, because they 
have a lot of them have that Docker background, right? And so, you know, when Docker finally started charging, it was one of the best things that Docker ever did for themselves because they became profitable. Um, and uh, and the fact that you know most people, mo you know, if you're an individual, you don't have to pay for Docker. There's no right. reason to pay for Docker. It's it's only for companies bringing in a pretty significant amount of money that those employees need to pay for Docker. Um, but uh, and I, I would imagine that would be something similar with Olama. Right. Um, yes, yeah, so Olama Enterprise is something that Matt pays for, but something Matt's company right. may pay for to run right. whatever model Matt came up with that's yeah. being used in yeah. prod. Uh, David's got another good comment in, in terms of like ChatGPT is not very helpful on its own. I, I'm not sure I agree with that fully, but I think that the, the other example is, but putting a model in a workflow is really beneficial. And I've certainly noticed that. Like if you think about human in the loop model. So for example, we were talking mm -hmm. about Matt's, I'm going to post something every time I upload right. a video. Please yeah. make sure one, the description describes the video and two, yeah. the link actually links to the video. Right. That's something that is, it, it, it's not like it's an afterthought maybe of Matt's workflow, but it is certainly mm -hmm. something that a language model could gobble up and do pretty yeah. easily for you, even if it just saved a draft and what you had to do was approve the draft, that is right. verify the description and verify the link. It's still better yep. than you doing it on your own because it gives you like that, that kickstart or, or head start. You're being pinned right. on something reactive as opposed to proactive, which for me is, is great. Like if I just need to review something and hit publish, way better than having to do it on my own. Yeah. Even if that lift isn't very heavy over time, let's say Matt's doing, what is it, four weeks of content here? That's about 28 days. Four weeks. One yeah. a day. Let's say this might take you, I don't know, five minutes. So we got four times seven is, uh, my math's pretty bad here, 28. 28 times five is like 1,440. So yeah, 140 minutes, Matt. Would you be willing to use a workflow for this? Like resoundingly, yes, oh, I yeah. would assume? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> right? Absolutely. That now, listen. Listen. I, I I have a day job. Uh, the company I work for recently released something called Workflows, and Workflows can use external APIs. But I feel like this is really where the rubber meets the road. It's like ServiceNow, for example. Uh, if the if this then that uh, was the other yep. app. Uh, shoot, I get this wrong last time too. It's got API in the name Zapier. Uh, Zapier, oh, yeah. that that kind of stuff. Where we're doing, where we're getting rid of the toil, or maybe robotic process automation or RPA. That stuff to me is where the, the gold really is. Right. It really. Like if you can think about a workflow or a process and eliminating toil and having a human in the loop where you're verifying mm -hmm. something that, let's say it's like a co-op student has done or something like that. It's way more right. interesting to me than, than asking questions of a chatbot, which is still useful. Like I, I won't discount mm -hmm. ChatGPT. I actually do use it. But I feel like this is way, way more useful. Yeah. I mean, I, I expect to you, one of the things I want to, uh, finish cleaning up is mm -hmm. I've got a kind of a, if you want to call it an agent workflow or, or however, whatever name you want to give it mm -hmm. to automatically help me come up with better ideas for videos, as well as generating descriptions, which I suck at or generating, right. uh, there's a number of things that it can do. Um, so yeah, I'm starting that into place for more of the videos I do to help me do more faster. Yeah, totally makes sense. Yeah, anything that's like overhead, right, is as part of the process. I've used some of these. Um, oh, what are they called? Like AI ingest helpers. So, like, imagine I'm taking a bunch of photos at a wedding, and the bride's mm -hmm. eyes are closed for a bunch of the shots. Those are going to be rejects. The mm -hmm. problem I've got is like they rejected a bunch of shots where like sometimes the eyes closed look pretty good, or like I've literally told the right. person to like close their eyes and be pensive for right. a point, they'll reject them kind of thing. So you need to know. The other yeah. is that whenever there's any like weird colors, which is like a lot of my stuff, it, it's going to think it's out of focus, so it'll reject it. But I do think that that workflow, the boring stuff, like what can we, yeah. how do we attack the boring? And I, I totally right. stole this from Y Combinator, uh, one of their podcast episodes. But I really do think that they've they've hit on something here is that when we're actually helping people reduce the toil, reduce the boring stuff that they're doing at work, that's that's where the money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, anything I can do to reduce the need to to do those boring things is is fantastic. Sorry, we ended up taking a bunch of questions. 
Sorry. <laughs> we I, I derailed the broadcast yet again. Um, I did have one <laughs> checkout I wanted to talk about. This is not yeah. a toy for, for once. It's clothing, but it's not T-shirts. So we're, we're, mm. we're really yeah, veering to the side. <laughs> I think you may have told me about this originally, and then my, my somebody at work told me, and then my partner told me, and eventually bought me a pair of compression socks from Lululemon mm-hmm. because I guess I'm admittedly a fan of local Vancouver startup, Lululemon. Uh-huh. Uh, they are surprisingly comfy i'm I'm using them now yeah. just like get used to them before i go to new york but i did want to wear them mm-hmm. on the plane have you used compression socks before and like what's, i what's have only take? used them on long flights okay i haven't used them so it, it that's it's been a while because i haven't done many long flights right. in quite a long time i mean a flight to i don't know if a flight to new york i count as long yet uh but uh like longer flights to 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 Amsterdam or to right. Australia, yeah, that those kinds of flights, absolutely. And and they're, I mean, it, I have I have uh, some pairs that have like a kind of cross pattern on it. Interesting. And so when you take it off your leg, you see that cross oh. pattern on your leg <laughs> Cause for so days tight. and days. Days. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Those some tight um, compression socks. They are. You've got a lot tight. of stored knowledge um, in your calves. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's especially good because um mm-hmm. you know when you take off you know I'll, I'll always take off my shoes when i'm on the plane really you're and one then... of those people i would i would like never you, you don't oh, you leave always. the socks on though right you're not oh yeah yeah okay, yeah, okay. yeah no uh, <laughs> not, not that far okay i always take and then putting them on at the end of the oh, of a longer flight is sometimes hard because they've gotten bigger right <laughs> um and so uh, uh it's uh the with the compression socks they don't i mean they, they stay nice and they slip right in and that's all, interesting all is good okay um, okay they my the ones i have um come all the way up i mean almost to the, to the knee i think they're supposed to is my understanding yeah okay yeah, they should hit like just the bottom of your knee yeah and go fully over the um, calf muscle is my understanding yeah. i mean they're ugly yeah they're really ugly <laughs> the i think they tried to make these look fancy but they're like extra ugly as a result because they've got neon green on them that you don't see until yeah. you put them yeah, on yeah. it's like no i i did not buy neon green socks yeah. actually i bought black <laughs> socks and you hid this yeah. thread in there for me but whatever no one should see them now are you one of yeah. those people who gets up and walks often on the plane because i honestly if i if i if I could make a trip without using the washroom once, including all the way to yeah. like Sydney or Bangalore or something, I'm yeah. happy. Like I don't want to bother the person beside me. I'm generally a window seat and just want to like always window seat. Yeah, I just want to like sensual deprivation. Like I don't want to know that I'm even on a yep. plane, kind of thing. Uh, I I wedge myself in there and then I'm in until I absolutely have to go. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> exactly. So the compression um, socks are important for us because we're not yeah. moving at all on the plane. Right. Okay. That's that's awesome. I, I thought you might have been the opposite just because you were a larger person. So I would assume that yeah. you wanted to like stand up and get the heck out of Dodge or something. But you just nestle um, in there and yeah, kind of chill. I I much prefer the window just because my legs are long. I mean, I'm, right. I'm, I'm tall. I'm yeah. six foot four. Yeah, and because of that, I do not. The aisle seat is the worst place to go right. because then I'd be tempted to put my foot out. And and then the, uh, the airline gonna... and a little yeah. cart will go over. <laughs> yeah, which is the uh, one of the classic stories for why uh, AI services is, are bad. Long legs. Have I? Well, <laughs> so a guy took a flight on Avianca Airlines, okay. uh, the Brazilian, I think, uh, airline, um, and stuck his feet out, and. Um, uh, the cart goes over it. He sues the airline, and his lawyer, um, in producing a brief, learns about ChatGPT oh, the no. day before, r- and says ChatGPT to come up with ten cases that prove his point in the letter to the court. ChatGPT generates this great list, great looking list, hallucination, puts it all in there, and none of them existed. Oh no! And so it was like basically thrown out. Oh, what a shining example of what not to do. Yeah. Yeah. What about yourself? Is there anything that you've checked out or we should know about? I rec- I just got uh, a new over there yeah. on my computer mm-hmm. on my uh, uh, monitor. I got a new light from BenQ. Okay. BenQ oh, something like Pro, a version that just came out in the last few weeks. Oh my God, it's so much nicer sitting down now. I mean, it was already pretty nice with the. Is it just a reading light the, or? 
Well, it's a, a bar that goes across the okay. Um, I think I see it yeah. across the monitor. So it's it's actually the the light is off now because you're supposed to see this light mm -hmm. that's coming over the shining on there. But um, uh, it's a black thing at the light. top of the monitor, right? Yeah, yeah, black thing at the top of the monitor, and it's just this beautiful, beautiful light. Um, it will automatically turn on when you sit down. Oh, nice! When there's you know movement in front of the monitor, it turns on automatically. And five minutes after there's no movement, it turns off automatically. Nice. Now, does it shine and, at um, you or it shine behind the monitor? It shines down. Oh, okay. And so it's lighting up your surface. Right. And it's just a really pleasant light. Mm, that's really cool. I've seen that Dyson workspace light that's supposed to do the same mm. thing, but it's oh, yeah? it's almost $1,000. It's ridiculous. Oh, God. There's no way this BenQ light is $1,000. BenQ's kind of known for no, like... 100, 120 bucks. Yeah, like value is, yeah. is what they're known for. Yeah, yeah it, as yeah. well as like color accuracy and fantastic monitors. Yep. So like, yep. I, I'd be interested in to see like if it adjusts the color quality or anything like that. Very, mm -hmm. very cool. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So that was... Uh, that's I, I do wonder though, I is think. it helping you like touch type or... Because you should be able to type without looking at your keys, right? If you're on... Is oh, it... I, don't, I don't look at my keys. Yes, yeah, right. I, I can... What are you looking at in your desk? It just helps the whole uh, the whole experience. It's just a more pleasant experience. It's, you're not, like, completely in the dark. You've got some a little bit you. of light I hear you. to help make it nicer. I've been interested... I mean, I've got, I've got the yeah. blinds that I can open up. Yeah, that's not um, the same. And so that be, it brings in a lot of light... But still, it's so much nicer having. Yeah, Blast wants to know what we're talking yeah. about. We're talking about uh, lights that go on top of your monitor that will uh, yeah. provide light to your working space. Yeah. So I think uh, the the things that they were talking about are, at least on the Dyson side, were things like drafting. So if you're writing in a notebook at your desk mm -hmm. or like a calendar or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Honestly, I feel like if I'm checking like a reference photo and then looking at the screen and then back, that could make sense. So right. I was thinking about it as well, like because the illumination in my office is awful and yeah. anything is better than nothing at this point in time. So I was also looking at it and I think I did see the BenQ announcement as well for this. Yeah. My understanding was yeah. it was supposed to be color accurate as well. So it wouldn't like mess up the color accuracy of your room, which is pretty right. sweet for me because like. If there's a light behind me or whatever, I could make all the photos orange and they look yeah. like Jersey Shore yeah. or I could just go, <laughs> go way out in the left field. Like if the light's too blue, I'll make them too orange. And if the light's too orange, I'll make them too blue or too bright, too dark, yep. that kind of thing. It's unfortunately yep. a result of the room. Yeah, I can't think of anything else that... Uh... Oh, I, 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 I did get something based on your... Oh, <laughs> don't... Please, folks in the chat, don't buy anything based on my recommendations. <laughs> based on your recommendation... Oh, I got oh the same one. Those two things, the same ones, <laughs> I, because I mean, I mean, they're, because they're like thirty bucks a piece. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like well, even if they're really stupid, I mean, it, they're. The, the, they're I, I only took one card out of Idea Tactics, and it kind of like changed my life. Well, I mean, the red I yeah. read the PDF as well, but it kind of yeah. changed my life in terms of like yeah. the way people are coming up with stories. I I had no idea yeah. there were workflows and all this stuff. Yeah. But yes, the no, it's great. the the idea of thinking about pieces of, yeah. what am I trying to say here? Content that I'm pointing out as kind of like a regular thing that can follow a generic workflow had not occurred right. to me and should have occurred to me. But I, I really yeah. like that about idea tactics. And the one, the laws yeah. of UX is all about psychology. So I haven't delved into that mm. too much, but I'm very interested yeah. in to hear like how you feel when you look at a green UI right. or a red UI, right. like that kind of thing. Super, super interested. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've gotten a good amount of value out of the storyteller one. Right. So Which I think it's the one they're, they're the most one. known for, right? Yes. Yeah. And the workshop tactics one I have back there. Right. Yeah. I, I should probably get that one as someone who's delivering a workshop at Dash. Workshops. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll get there eventually. When, when is that? That is next Tuesday. In fact, one week from okay. now. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So if anyone else is in New York, please come to chat with me. Oh, yeah. Look, look, look at Datadog Dash. But yeah, if I think we're sold out at this point in time. I'll have a look at the details. But like, yeah, it's, it's pretty popular this year, which is good. Um, what was the, the, um, the first Dash, I think? Uh, first or second, um, where we had uh, free workshops oh, the day before. Right. Did you, were you there? For I, that? I haven't, but this has come up in discussion a few times this year. 
Um, so there are things like locations uh, and stuff like that. There. Well, so it was at this place called Something Studio. It was uh, there's a lot of catalogs and and fashion shoots that are done there, and so. Oh, is uh, it Pier 59? Oh, no. No, no, it, was, okay. it wasn't Pier 51. The, it was before we did it at Pier, the Piers. Um, so uh, we sent out this email saying, would anybody be interested in going to these uh, workshops? We're going to be doing free workshops the day before. Um, and we didn't get really that much you know, response. Uh, uh, a few people responded. It's like, okay, well, based on, you know, how, we, you know, open rates and, and for emails and, and all this stuff, uh, we know that we've sent it out to, you know, all 700 people who are going to attend. Right. Um, so we know that we really only need to plan for, you know, maybe 400, 500 will show up. Um, and uh, so that's good. We're, let's just go with that. And, um, uh, and then the day of the event happens and like 900 people showed up Whoa. for these free classes. <laughs> and, uh, and the fire marshal had to come and say, no, yeah. there's no more people yeah. allowed in this building. We are way beyond capacity. I'm sorry. We, and that was a bit, you know, people had flown in right. to New York from all over the country free early yeah. for this. They just didn't let data dog know. <laughs> mm. Um, and so they were stuck as like, ah, um, yeah, so it was, uh, I, I an think interesting... we charge for workshops now. I'm not like, I don't think yeah. it's a lot of money, but I think it's mostly to make yeah. sure other people show, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. That was the, that was also the one where we, I was promised a landline to my, to my right. workshop and we showed up and it was only Wi-Fi, and the Wi-Fi was, we paid for the absolute maximum Wi-Fi, and we didn't have it. Oh, no. And uh, the pr head of IT for the place called in sick that oh, day. No. And so it was just disaster after disaster after disaster. Oh, sorry, I should correct myself. As part of the ticket to Dash, you get the, the word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, but they all, like, same. They have registrations and waitlist lines yeah. and, and all that stuff. They, they're quite popular. I'm teaching, I think, yeah. a 100-person class this year on just integrations. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's always fun. I do yeah. somehow really like running workshops. Maybe it's your yeah. your good influence or something like that. But I certainly started <laughs> early. I did it all, and it's like yeah. it's actually fun. I I don't yeah. mind it at all. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, perhaps one of the things I kind of miss about being a data dog was workshops. I mean, that, the workshops. Oh. I mean, that, I was the one that started them, uh, so it was <laughs> it was. It was uh, kind of fun. I, I wonder if there's any like appetite in the chat for an Olama workshop with Matt. We should we should float that out there on your, <laughs> your Patreon <laughs> or something. <laughs> Somebody's asked me uh, pretty recently I, to I uh, think, for sure because I feel like I know in. Olama, but the way I know Olama is just clicking all the buttons. Whereas there's yeah. probably a little bit more to it than that. I've never read anything, <laughs> not gone to Reddit, not yeah. chatted, not gone to Discord, nothing. I just click around, yeah. till things work. Yeah. Just Olama run, <laughs> just ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Shall we find the end stream okay. button? This was awesome. I think so. Is, Thank you so much. Yeah, this is good. All right. Thanks so much, everyone, yeah, for, for the chat. joining us on this chat. Um, I'm going to click the stop button.